Welcome to Overwatch. This time we're going to talk about the Overwatch League and what it means for Overwatch as a whole. Because being honest, this was probably the biggest announcement at BlizzCon. Not Sombra, not the Arcade, not anything like that. This was Blizzard saying they're basically starting an esports league that's multi-million dollar in value and will run for several years and they're going to manage the overwhelming majority of the infrastructure themselves. There's a part of me that kind of reels in shock at that. There's no ifs or buts here. There's going to be a salaried Overwatch League in the coming year that has clear entry points for players, oversight and development, and is first and foremost looking to be stable, which is something that the esports scene often isn't, and when it is, it can often be to a slight detriment. So, first things first, if you aren't familiar with what the Overwatch League is somehow, Blizzard are kind of changing the landscape of esports for Overwatch. They're founding a league based on cities and locations, so for example, LA could have an Overwatch team, New York will have an Overwatch team, so on so on like that, and will run a league built around these teams. Rather than a Fnatic or a Team Liquid or a Cloud9, you would have London and Paris and Chicago, and we'll get into why they're doing that shortly. From what I've gleaned from various interviews and the information floating around on the OW League, the big plan is to have an on-season and an off-season for it. If you're familiar with the LCS, you'll probably understand a little bit about what that means, but different from Riot Le uh, Riot's League of Legends Championship Series, the LCS if you're not familiar with that, is that Nate Nanza, the guy in charge of it, was very specific in saying that he doesn't want the League to shut out other tournaments in the established scene as such, so the inference that I took from that was during the lengthy off-season, we'll see the non-OW League tournaments getting played with traditional lineups and traditional organizations sort of stepping to the fore. How that'll work exactly? Who knows? What I imagine is various team owners will buy themselves into various cities and locations and then build their teams around that and then when off-season hits they'll take their teams into the more standard or normal leagues. Let's talk about teams first. The idea of having a national or city-based team isn't new in esports. It's been tried before and it's pretty much always failed whenever it occurs. There's a few reasons, financial probably being the largest, making sure the team is earning enough money to sustain a very talented player base in a world where sponsorship is the primary funding for esports while still having some semblance of those local roots just is not worth the time and the hassle. Why bother making a Stoke-on-Trent team when you can make a global team with wider reach and wider global appeal? Nate's answer for that is fascinating to me, by the way, and one that could only really exist now in esports when events sell out, you know, Madison Square Garden and fill stadiums with the international happening with Dota 2 and Counter Strike fills stadiums constantly. His argument ran like this a lot of esports teams own stadiums or venues that simply sit empty for a good portion of the year. They're practically begging for events to come and fill those stadiums, and it gives esports a reach to sell physical merchandise at these events, at these local events, and monetize the teams at live venue, which is where a huge amount of profit. It lies. There's space for growth there that's very much untapped. But it'll take a while to get there. I'd be surprised if the first year of Overwatch League isn't restricted to only a few locations, but Nate is a dreamer and listening to him talk is very pleasant, but right now it is still talk. I do recommend, and I'll give a massive shout out here to Chan Man, the podcast that he did, I'll put a link into the description as well. He did an interview with Nate Nanza where a lot of this is covered and they do sort of ask him a few good questions. So definitely go and watch that if you want to find out more as well after you're done watching my wonderful video, of course. I have a number of personal concerns with the league, the first and foremost being right at the outset. Launching this thing needs to be as global as possible which also is the riskiest way of launching it, of course, rather than just doing a local smaller league first, testing it out and then making it huge. But the thing is, you can't offer stability and security to esports professionals and then, say, only launch in the United States. There's already this issue in esports where the money is primarily in the US, even dating back to like StarCraft 2. There's a long issue of talented Korean professionals doing well in the GSL and then joining the American organizations for huge money, flying to the US and instantly slumping as they lose the practice environment and infrastructure that made them the greatest in the first place. The same is true for Europe. European talent has steadily been sliding into the North American teams more and more as the primary audience is in North America, so the money is there. I don't blame the players for this at all. They're looking out for themselves and that's what they should be doing. They have every right to do that. But if the OW League doesn't launch across all the major esports hubs, Korea, North America and Europe, and you could even argue like Brazil, for example, as a big esports scene these days then expect every player to want to try out for the leagues that are available. I think that would be crippling to have this move towards local talent, having teams tied to location somewhat, and then have, say, the top North American team be five Europeans and one American. Oh wait, does that sound familiar? I hope that sounds familiar to you guys, it certainly sounds familiar to me. I imagine they know this already, but it does bring me on to the next point nicely, which is how do you have that local flavor to the team? How do you have that local talent? What's the restriction going to be? How are they going to make that feel proper? How's it going to feel like if you're in Los Angeles, for example, cheering for the LA team, and they're 
six Korean guys because those are the most talented and hardest working players around. So how do you fix that? Well, Blizzard are no strangers to region locking. The WCS for StarCraft 2, for example, was region locked. It was implemented late, but it was mostly praised when it did so. In my mind, it's rather key. If you want to have a league with cities and such being the central focus, having the talent at least nationally relevant to those cities is going to be important. It also helps foster grassroots talent and evenly spread the talent pool across various teams as well. One guiding principle of this league seems to be the idea that the clear path to the professional scene is there. Get up high on the ladder, get to the comp, Combine, get scouted, get a contract, and then, you know, go ahead and become the greatest Overwatch player of all time, Crusher 99, lol. If you have to beat out not only talent from your region, but also every other region, that sounds a little unfair, yeah? Yeah. This, of course, gets even more complicated when you consider Europe, where playing for the Paris team, for example, well, what if everyone's not even French on that team? Surely that's going to feel bad for the Parisian crowd. And that's an even bigger problem than the US could face, where you could perhaps fudge it where the Chicago team isn't necessarily from Chicago, for example. That, and I think the one big thing that Nate wants is the idea of local communities rallying behind their teams, or at least teams from relatively near them. It kind of works in America, like I said, there's a number of large cities after all, and... And you probably live near enough one to find an esports team that you could like. But in Europe, things get kind of murky. What countries and what cities will have teams? There's a huge talent pool in Eastern Europe, for example, but is there really an incentive to set up a team there and have a venue there? Is the financial support there to sustain it outside of what Blizzard gives? I know Poland actually has a pretty solid esports scene, and there's a lot of good events that happen in Poland these days, but... Is it there for the long term? It starts getting trickier the further away you go from major western cities, and it would be a shame to only have moving somewhere else as the option for talent in these locations. I sound like I'm being down on it, but I just want it to be right, because if this works, it'll be an enduring esports league that could serve as an easy template for other games to follow. It's also looking to get standard sports owners involved in esports who have the finances to expand the market and do so in a way that puts them into contact with current esports leaders. That's huge, rather than just investing a ton of money into the scene and being a bit clueless, they should be working with the current scene and building something enduring. By having other revenue streams for the current esports organizations as well, other than just simple sponsorships, but having merchandising rights and venue rights as well, that could be absolutely huge, and teams might be able to get away from the razor-thin profit margins that a lot of esports organizations run on, which is healthier for the scene as a whole. I haven't even touched on the most important aspect, the game itself. Right now, it's no secret that the game has issues with observability. Even though that's not really a word, you guys know what I mean. For someone like me who actively casts and breaks down events and matches, even I can struggle to catch what's going on in various games, particularly during things like double graviton surges with transcendence going on at the same time. It just becomes a big visual cluster loving. Blizzard know about this and good observing is on the rise as seen by the World Cup, but it's still a huge concern and is worrying for the growth long term of the game. I want to touch on the player reaction as well. A lot of players I know I would call cautiously optimistic, although some do seem a little bit uncertain as to what the league means for their current standing with various teams. That uncertainty then feeds into fears that they could be without a team after the combine happens. Personally, I think the current players should be fine especially the players in the top 10 or so teams, and a lot of them are excited about the potential that the league brings. The players can focus on being players, signing for a season, and knowing their teams are funded and stable and not going away. Organizers I'm hearing are pretty much mostly positive, and who can blame them? With Blizzard footing the bill for things like team houses and baseline salaries, it'll take some of the pressure off these teams. Part of me wonders if we'll end up with an LCS-style situation, though, with no salary caps and teams trying to compete in bidding for players. It's no secret that in the LCS, the baseline salary Riot gives is nothing compared to what the LCS players are actually earning, which could easily occur here if the projected growth for Overwatch actually does occur, which again leads to the issue of players going where the money is, but not necessarily a push towards where the talent is, so to speak. At the end of the day, I'm optimistic for the league. I don't think there'll be some huge explosive revolution in esports happening where it'll instantly knock League of Legends off the top spot, but I think it'll chug along quietly in the background and grow and develop with time. Don't expect Blizzard to knock Riot away or Counter-Strike over anytime soon, though. I'm also curious to what you guys think. What issues do you see? What haven't I mentioned? What have I missed? If this makes you interested as well in trying to push higher on ladder, for example, to get a shot at going to the combine and getting a tryout, one of the most overwhelming reactions I've seen to this is people saying, huh, yeah, I could give that a go. And it's really good to see that because I think that encourages people to play better, encourages people to uh, get more involved in the pro scene as well and follow the pro scene a bit more. And it just warms my heart, basically. I think that clarity of path is a huge positive to me, and the noise that, hey, if I spend six or seven hours grinding ranked a night, there might be a light at the end of the tunnel. And that's kind of cool, isn't it? Doodles.